Claire is 38 weeks and one day pregnant with her first baby and has had a low-risk pregnancy. She and her partner have been in labour in a birth centre, but her progress has slowed and she's been transferred to an obstetric-led delivery suite for monitoring. Abby, the midwife, has just performed an ARM and has noted significant meconium-stained lycor. We've broken your waters and there's meconium. Baby's done a poo in the waters. Because that's a new risk factor, it's a new concern for baby, we've asked for another midwife to come into the room called Laura. Um, she is going to do what we call a fresh eyes assessment. So it's basically a fresh pair of eyes to look at baby's heartbeat um, and make a decision. Hi guys. Hi Laura. Hi, My name's Laura. I'm one of the other midwives. I've just come to have a little look at your baby's heart rate, if that's okay. okay. Yeah. So we might just talk amongst ourselves for a minute and then we'll explain um, everything that's going on, if that's okay. So Claire is a prime mip. She's 38 weeks and one day today. Uh, we transferred over from the birth centre for a delay in first stage. We've had an epidural which is working effectively. Yeah. yeah. Um, however I've just done a vaginal examination and broken waters and there is meconium okay. which is a new risk factor. Okay okay I can see you filled this out so um, that's brilliant I'll have a have a little look yeah. and see what I think. Okay, so um, yeah, I think um, I agree. It seems that the baseline is appropriate for gestation, I would say, um, but there is some reduced um, variability over the last sort of 30 minutes, but not longer than 50. Um, and there are some repetitive chemoreceptor decelerations emerging, I think. So yeah, I agree with you. I think it comes down in our amber sort of compensated column. Um, what were you planning on doing next? Uh, so I was going to review again in half an hour, but we need a bedside review. So we'll get one of the doctors to come into the room, do a full assessment okay. um, at the bedside and come up with a plan, see if they've got any other ideas, have a chat with you both. Yeah, I think okay. yeah. sounds fine, thank okay. you. Super. Do you want to take that and I'll mm -hmm. stay in um, with Claire and just yeah. explain to her what, what we're doing. Perfect, right. thank you, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm just a bit tired. Oh, it's just, I know. Yeah. Hi Nadia. Hi. Um, would you be able to come and do a review in room 15 please? Yeah. Um, it's Claire, she's the primate who was the transfer from birth centre for the delay in first stage. Yep. I've just done the ARM and there's meconium. Okay. Um, CTG is compensating, okay. um, but we need a bedside review, please. Yeah, that's fine. And what's your plan for her? I've done a position change, so hopefully that will help. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's another review in half an hour. Yeah, um, great. But yeah, a face-to-face -face review would be perfect. Yeah, no problem. And is she well hydrated? Yep, yep, she's got good output. Perfect. And there's no concerns about infection? Just the meconium, but no, okay. she's not scoring on her observations. Perfect, yes. Okay, I'll come now. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. My Hi. name's my name's Nadia. I'm one of the obstetric doctors. I've been hearing all about you from your midwife, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to find out what you understand about what's happening at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it just seems to be taking a really long time. Um, and I think Abby mentioned she was a bit worried about the baby's heartbeat in the last sort of half an hour or so. Yeah, so it sounds like um, there was a slightly slower progress than we'd like in the first part of labour. Mm. And so she broke your waters to try and speed things up a bit. And it seems that baby's done a poo, yeah. um, which does happen sometimes. Um, but it just means we need to keep a really close eye on baby's monitoring and we really want it to be as normal as possible throughout your labour. Um, on the monitoring at the moment, there are a couple of concerning features um, and there's a few reassuring features okay. as well. And what that means is that we need to keep a really close eye on it um, and probably try some measures to improve things over the next 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, if things do improve, then it's perfectly safe to continue in your labour. Um, if things don't improve or things worsen in the meantime, then at this stage of labour, we'd be looking at recommending a caesarean section. Okay. Um, and if you wanted to now, rather than wait, um, it, it is all right to go for a caesarean now instead, um, depending on what your preferences are and how you feel about it, really. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't in the original plan. Um, I think if we could maybe try and wait for a little bit longer and see if things improve with some time, um, I would probably prefer that. Yeah, that's but, fine. But whatever you think is best. Yeah, I think it is safe to wait and, and see if things improve and we can try and encourage things to improve in that time. Yeah. Um, and then if things don't, then I'll pop back and have a chat with you about where we go from there. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah. 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 Do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, I don't think I do. No, okay. thank you. So looking at the risk factors, it's only meconium lycor, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, and slow progress in labour. And then looking at the CTG, uh, the baseline rate is appropriate for gestation. Um, the variability has improved and it's now more than five. Um, there is cycling present. There's no repetitive chemoreceptor decelerations now. Um, and there are a couple of accelerations. So I agree with you. Now there's no fetal hypoxia. It's normal CTG. 
Um, so I think we're okay to continue like you'd planned and for an examination two hours after the last um, and uh, hourly fresh eyes. Perfect. Does that sound okay? Yeah, super, thank you very much. Perfect, no problem. Let me know if you've got any other concerns. Yeah, we'll do. Okay, thank see you later. Cheers. A truly objective Fresh Eyes involves two independent reviewers um, working together in a calm, um, non-rushed situation to review the CTG in question. One of the most important things I think in human factors and getting teams to succeed is the relationships that are at the very centre. Everything will succeed or fail based on the quality of the relationships that are in the workplace. I agree, it seems that the baseline is appropriate for gestation I would say, um, but there is some reduced um, variability over the last sort of 30 minutes but not longer than 50 um, and there are some repetitive chemoreceptor decelerations emerging I think so yeah I agree with you I think it comes down in our amber sort of compensated column. It's really important to have a systematic approach and the reason for that is so that you don't miss any of the small things that create the clinical picture and also the elements of the CTG that you're looking at. Um, it means that what we can do is everybody has the same approach and it gives us a tool that we can all use and to ensure that we don't miss anything at all. We can see how people are acting, we can see what they're writing down, but we can't see what they're thinking and what they're processing. So it's a really good idea to speak out loud what you're thinking, and that is what we call sharing your mental model. You're then sharing what you're thinking for other teams to process that, to agree or disagree and to come to that shared understanding. What were you planning on doing next? Uh, so I was going to review again in half an hour, but we need a bedside review. So we'll get one of the doctors to come into the room, do a full assessment okay. um, at the bedside and come up with a plan, see if they've got any other ideas, have a chat with you both. If any abnormality is identified, um, then that should be escalated appropriately. Most commonly to either um, a midwife, for example, the midwife in charge of the labour ward um, or the obstetric team. Escalation is a two-way process um, This because there's two people involved. Communication needs to be two-way in this process and that is not just the verbal, it's how we respond to hearing escalation. So um, the person who's doing the escalation has the responsibility of sharing the information and doing that to the person who is the right person who's available to talk to them. They, knew, they need to use professional language where possible, avoiding kind of social language if they can, um, to be concise, uh, to speak in bullet point form if you like and to be really clear what they want from the person they're escalating to. It's Claire, she's the primate who was the transfer from birth centre for the delay in first stage. Yep. I've just done the ARM and there's meconium. Okay. Um, CTG is compensating okay. um, but we need a bedside review please. On the other side the person who's receiving the escalation has to be um, approachable, they have to be willing to listen, um, they have to be open and curious because um, Sometimes we're worried about something, but we can't entirely put our finger on it. So it's really helpful if the receiving person is curious and explores that with us. Um, and then, of course, they have to act on what we've said. And what's your plan for her? I've done a position change, so hopefully that will help. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's another review in half an hour. Yeah, um, great. But yeah, a face-to-face -face review would be perfect. Yeah, no problem. Closing the loop in Fresh Eyes is about um, making sure that the message... Um, the clinical factors that you want to be understood have been heard and they've been understood. So the person who's um, describing the CTG that they want to have fresh eyes done of it will explain some clinical situations and closing the leap will be the person who's doing the fresh eyes, repeating those. So between the two people, they understand we're certain that the person who's doing the fresh eyes has understood the clinical situation as it is. So I think we're okay to continue like you'd planned and for an examination two hours after the last um, and uh, hourly fresh eyes. Perfect. Does that sound okay? Yeah, super. Thank you very much. Perfect. No problem. Let me know if you've got any other concerns. Yeah, we'll do. A team, when they're getting ready to make a plan, um, should have shared their mental model first. So everybody uh, who's involved has got um, the same understanding what's going on. That means they can come up with a plan that they all agree with, that's achievable with for everybody in the room, and that there's a shared understanding of what the plan is and once you've all agreed what the plan is you need to document that very clearly and that will be done in the woman's records be that electronic or paper um, and what's really important about documenting your plan is that it's concise um, 
it's a really good practice to try and write your plans in bullet points if you can. It's really key to make sure that you have um, a time frame for when you're going to have somebody either come back and review or a time frame that you need to go back and ask for a review, depending on what that situation is. If you don't have that, you can just get lost in time and it passes too quickly. To summarise, the purpose of a Fresh Eyes review is to gain a different perspective on a situation. The tool should be used systematically to ensure that all points are covered and this should be spoken out loud in order to share the mental model. If the situation needs to be escalated to someone more senior, the handover should be concise with clear objectives. And the person receiving the escalation should be approachable and open. Any decisions made should be shared within the team and any plans should be documented. This plan should always include a time frame for next steps.